The Catholic Church makes one of the boldest claims in human history that at every Mass, a small wafer of bread becomes truly the flesh and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. God himself, the Almighty, the all-powerful, comes down to dwell in this very small host, which has all of the appearance of bread. How in the world could the church make such a claim that this is not a sign and not a symbol, but has truly become the flesh and blood of God himself? There's three reasons why the church makes such an audacious claim. First, because Jesus himself said it. If you go to John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Now, could he mean that symbolically? Well, Jesus certainly says a number of other things that he isn't literally. He says, I am the vine. He says, I am the light of the world. He says, I am the way. Well, Jesus is not literally a vine. He's not literally a light bulb or a candle. He's not literally a path. So could Jesus have meant this symbolically when he said, I am the bread of life? Well, listen to what Jesus goes on to say. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Now the Jews understood what he was saying. They understood that he was talking about what they thought was cannibalism, that literally they would be eating flesh. And so naturally they recoiled at that thought. They said, no way. And they began to quarrel among themselves. So does Jesus try to correct that misunderstanding? Does he say, oh, wait, wait, you misunderstand me? No, he actually doubles down and he says, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Now, a couple things here. First of all, when Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, what he's saying is, listen up. What I'm about to say is absolutely literal. So secondly, though, he says, he uses a very interesting Greek word. He says, unless you trogon, the flesh of the Son of Man. Now, trogon is literally translated as chew or gnaw or rip with your teeth. It's a very graphic verb that must be interpreted literally. It cannot be interpreted symbolically because of its graphic nature. And so Jesus clearly meant that in some mystical way, we must take his flesh and place it within our mouths that his body must enter our body. Now, what's the Jewish reaction to this? Well, they walk away in John chapter 6, verse 66. It says that many of his former disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompany Jesus. So did Jesus run after them, try to correct a misunderstanding? No, he didn't. He allowed them to walk away and he turned to his disciples and said, are you two going to leave? And Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Jesus was willing to lose disciples over this teaching that the Eucharist was truly his body and blood. If he was that serious about it, then clearly he must be meaning this literally. A second reason why we can believe that the Eucharist is truly Christ's body and blood is because the church has always taught it. Around the year 150, a saint by the name of St. Justin the Martyr wrote this about the Eucharist. He said, We do not consume the Eucharistic bread and wine as if it were ordinary food and drink. For we have been taught that the food becomes the flesh and blood of the incarnate Jesus by the power of his own words contained in the prayer of thanksgiving. Now the Greek word for thanksgiving is Eucharistia, the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the highest form of thanksgiving. Since the very beginning of the church, Christians believed that the Eucharist was truly the body and blood of Jesus. It's not some medieval invention.
finally, a third reason why we can believe solidly that the Eucharist is truly the flesh and blood of Christ is because over the course of centuries, there's been a number of Eucharistic miracles that have strengthened our faith. Perhaps the most famous is the Eucharistic miracle of Lanciano in Italy. Around the year 700, there was a priest who was struggling to believe that Jesus Christ was truly present in the Eucharist. And as he held up the Eucharistic host, it became visible flesh. As he spoke those words of consecration over the chalice, they became visible blood. And this miracle has been preserved for the last 1,200 years without the use of any preservatives. Modern scientists have done a number of tests on it and they've found that this is heart flesh from a human being. They also found that the blood, which has since dried into five globs, symbolizing the five wounds of Christ, when they measure the weight of each of the globs, they find that the weight of one is equal to the weight of all five combined. And modern science cannot explain how this happens. Over the last 20 centuries, there's been over 150 Eucharistic miracles that have been documented. Perhaps the most recent happened in Buenos Aires in Argentina. It is indeed a bold and startling claim to say that Jesus Christ is truly present in the Holy Eucharist. And yet we as Catholics believe that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Catholic faith. So we must rekindle within our hearts what John Paul II calls a Eucharistic amazement for so great a gift and miracle that happens every single day at your local parish church.